uh, People's Party government will substantially lower the total number of immigrants and refugees we accept every year from 350,000 a year to between 100 and 150,000. Instead of making it easier to enter to Canada, like the Liberals are doing right now, we will make it more difficult by fencing off the areas where it takes place, such as the Western world and Quebec. Bernier plans to cut immigration levels by more than 50 percent and erect a fence, as you heard right there, to keep people from crossing over the border in between official points of entry. Melissa, I'll start with you. Your take? Well, I, I think it's actually a difficult conversation to have um, in terms of uh, in terms of immigration, because any time you talk about uh, immigration policy in this country, you're called a racist, whether it talks about the levels of immigration or how they get in. Uh, I think it would be better off if, if during election period we actually had a substantive policy conversation about what's wrong with our immigration system. And I suspect that's not going to be able to happen when you've got, um, you know, Mr. Bernier on uh, on one side and frankly, the, the liberals on the other. Uh, Tim, what do you think? <laughs> well, that was an interesting spin, Melissa. I think the challenge is this, and, and, and when you actually look at kind of polling support for immigration and the views about it, there's a significant difference between those who vote conservative, and I'm not saying conservative politicians, but the, those who vote conservative and those who vote liberal, although the Greens, the, interestingly, kind of sway towards the conservative side, in which they're, the opposition to, to immigration, the notion that we need to be stricter is, is kind of like the flip story of liberals and NDP supporters. So one supports it, one doesn't. And so the challenge politic, so he, uh, Bernier, is speaking to a group of people who could vote his party or conservative, where that kind of message is a higher degree of resonance, which creates a bit of a problem. I mean, there, you know, look, uh, the, when you look at it, substantively, there isn't really a problem with immigration. We need it to maintain our economy. We need it to grow. Uh, and when you look at the challenge in those places uh, where we did have, you know, somewhere in the last kind of about 15,000 people a year crossing illegally, it's now half that amount. And the government's in the process of trying to fix the, the challenge in the safe third party country agreement in the United States to, to reduce that even more. So I think illegal immigration isn't, or refugees who aren't coming through the proper process is being dissipated as a problem and uh, uh, letting immigrants in has different views politically but is an important part of building our country. Yeah, I think I, it's I almost two, yeah, and I'll get to one second, um, Andrew. It's just two, it's, I think it's two different discussions and I, and I understand your take on the numbers. I think as those numbers ebb and flow though, the discussion changes as well, right? Like if the problem is yeah. present and we're looking at it, people are, there are genuine concerns over it. The government at first, years ago when it started happening was saying, no, we don't even need to touch the safe third country agreement. Now they're looking at modernizing it. We don't know what that will look like. I think there is, as to Melissa's point, a substantive conversation that could be had about that. Is erecting a fence, Andrew, you know, the way to deal with that issue? Well, let's go back. I want to pick up on Tim's point, though, because I think that he's uh, not exactly uh, reading the numbers the right way. Let's understand that today the Liberal government is allowing in fewer skilled immigrants than the Conservative government was in 2015, where the increase has come and where they're projecting a big increase, almost 100,000 more a year is on the family uh, entry category and the refugees. That's a huge increase. So when we're trying to talk about the value of immigration to the economy, bringing in skilled workers, the brain gain, that's one group. That is flatlined under this administration and still basically bringing in Harper error policies in terms of those numbers. Now Bernie wants to dial that back, but it's driven by the fact that there has been this decision by the Liberal government to increase so rapidly the number of the family uh, reunification category and the refugee category that people are conflating these issues. And I think that's really problematic. There was a study just recently uh, released by the Public Policy Forum that shows that although in polite company people don't like to talk about this, about 40 percent, a little more than 40 percent of, of Canadians were open to the idea of significantly dialing back the amount of unskilled uh, labor-driven uh, immigration. And more than a third of Canadians supported doing that on skilled immigrants. So this may be uh, a piece that we would like to push out of the corners of polite society, but it's very much being discussed uh, out and about in the country, and I think that we need to be mindful of what's driving that and what the appropriate solutions are in response. I've, I've got less than a minute. Melissa? 
And the problem is, is that we can't actually have a conversation in the in the context of an election about this because Why? we're time, having one right now. Every time, every time a political party says they want to dial back the number or reform the system or focus on uh, skilled, educated immigrants or 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 not have people jump the queue or fix uh, the but border issue. But the antidote issue, to that is putting forward very specific solutions. And mm -hmm. and and I'm sure that parties will put to, uh, put forward very specific p solutions. But you have a liberal government who, from from one side, of, is increasing uh, the numbers, and frankly, it's a bit of virtue signaling. Because at the same time, you have a prime minister who has barely said anything about a province where you can't wear a hijab and teach in a public school. So I, what does that say to? I, uh, I gotta immigrants? go. I'm so sorry. I'm out of time. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thanks so much to the power panel: Tim Murphy, Melissa Lansman, and Andrew Thompson. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.